Welcome to the program. Today, we are going to speak to a well-known media personality who many of you have listened to on radio and some have watched her on UBC TV, Jackie Lombasi. This is The Shift. I'm Kara Ashava. There has been an increase in the number of women working in media as compared to back then when it was dominated by men. Jackie Lombasi shares the tale of women in media. Welcome to the program, Jackie. Oh, thank you, Good Carol. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to see and you too. Thanks for too. making time. My pleasure. Thanks <laughs> for hosting me. All right. Yeah. Now, to start with, uh, briefly tell us, maybe, mm. who is Jackie Lombasi? For those who may not actually know. Oh, man. Mm. Huh? A firstborn in a family of five, mm. a very loud, jolly person. Yes. Jackie Lumbasi is also passionate about the media and communication generally. She's very outgoing and friendly. That is and, evident. Uh, <laughs> that is evident, you know. <laughs> and she also can be strict at times. Um, a poor timekeeper, but learning, um, mm. improving. Yeah. Media personality. Poor then time what keeper? Keeper? But no, I, I make it. I make it on time <laughs> for the show in the morning. Right. So I'm not probably I'm not that bad, mm. but. I, I tell myself that so that I improve. Okay. Yes. And what are some of those uh, fond childhood memories you cannot forget? Fond childhood memories. Yes. Wow. At least one that you cannot forget. Only one. <laughs> I think the one that is very precious, close to my heart, and uh, one I will remember this automatically because it's just the other day that I was talking about my dad. I remember when he lost his job. I'm the first one. And the guy lost his job when I was in P5. And we're all wondering, what is going to happen? <laughs> then there we are, we leave the company house and moved to some slummy area in Nairobi. And my dad had to take on a job at a construction site. Because the job had ended, he didn't know what, what you know, like the most immediate thing to do was to take on a casual job yeah. for then yeah. as he plans his next move. And I remember my sister was in a, we were in the same neighborhood, but a, a bit of, maybe a few kilometers apart, but not very far. And my dad took a job in the middle of the two schools. So I had my sister and my brother in Westlands Primary, I was in Green Primary, and my dad was in between. He would call us over, like we would meet for lunch at that place. And so picture, it's a construction site, and you know the kind of lunch they serve yes, there. Yes. But that is all that my bin. dad, exactly, <laughs> and that is all my dad could afford. But still, we would go there, he sits with his children, and we eat this, we are laughing, having the greatest moment of our lives. We would finish lunch, we go to school, and later we would walk back home. And it was lovely. I think, for me, the fondest memories are those that I created with my family. Okay. Well, very close and we've always been. Briefly take us through your education background. How was it like? Yes, mm. it was uh, It was a smooth one. I guess like many of us, there would be times when there would be no school fees, mm. but things would be made easier because my dad was committed, my mom was also committed. Mm. And so once in a while when the money wouldn't be there, they would come and talk to the school administration, would be allowed in. I wasn't your <laughs> student. Okay. I won't lie. I wasn't an ex student. Mm -hmm. I was more playful than mm -hmm. if I went back to my childhood now, I think I would concentrate on studies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, so then I go through primary school in a place called Kitale. Mm -hmm. Kitale is where I was born, that's okay. my home. Then my father gets a job in Nairobi, so we go there. We join him at some point. When I was done with primary school, I went to Kakamega. I did my form four in Kakamega, then came to Uganda. Yeah. So you've been so in Uganda ever since? I've been in Uganda since 2002. Ooh, I know. Uganda, no. I am Uganda, no doubt. <laughs> and it also didn't take me long to learn the language okay. because my mother tongue is Luya, okay, Bukusu Luya, which is a Bantu language very close to Luganda, oh. which is commonly used so in Kampala. So you whenever they are Not just click. You can I, I review book a day on the Big <laughs> Breakfast Show. What are you telling me? <laughs> Right. And yeah. when do you think of joining media? Was it something you wanted uh, yeah. way back since your childhood? Okay. How did you learn in media? When I was uh, when I left Kitale and went to Nairobi, my prime my English teacher in class five he taught me five six seven and eight. Is a guy called Bernard Otieno. 
he's a sports commentator. Mm. He still does that until now. So besides doing sports commentary, he does that for even international sporting events. He was anchoring news on the state broadcaster in Kenya. That's the UBC of Kenya. Okay. Yeah. So I remember he, he made a remark. After a few months of me being in his class, he called me aside and he said, you're amazing. You came here the other day, didn't know any English word, <laughs> but you've learned English so fast. You know, he didn't know that I had to learn English because in my neighborhood, my sister would play, because my sister was in Nairobi earlier than all of us. And so she'd be playing with her peers, the other kids in the neighborhood, and they would be using English. Mm. At times she'd avoid playing with us because we didn't know English. <laughs> so I had, I had to learn in order to fit in. And my teacher thought, oh, you're very good. And I think one day, I remember he told me that. He said, one day, with that English of yours, you should work on radio. Yeah, I looked at him and said, oh, teacher, I think you're lying. Yes, it didn't make sense then. <laughs> and we're having this conversation in P5, well, yeah, first time of P5. But then he remained with me all the way to P8 and he kept reminding me. So when I joined high school, my friends thought I had a unique voice and very few of them believed that I had actually studied in a village school. Because it was a village school where English wasn't the first language, you know. Yeah. And we used to use Swahili. Yeah, we used to use Swahili. At times we'd use our mother tongue and we'd be beaten for it. But so I joined high school and they feel like, oh, you speak very good English, you know, better than most of us. And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord, that's interesting. So I finished high school. When I joined, when I came to Kampala, I remember even my principal at Umkat said the same thing. Bale Francis was my lecturer and he said, oh, you have a stunning voice mm. and you're eloquent. God, I thought, oh, that encouraged you. Know. you. <laughs> that encouraged me. But, so it all, the seed was sowed when I was in primary school when this guy, who was already in media, thought I had potential. And um, speaking of the good English, I can attest to that. Um, <laughs> you really have good English. Oh, I think that's why you attract you. so many listeners on radio, <laughs> yeah. even when you used to be on UBC. Yes. You know, that voice is really attractive. Oh, I thank God for the yes. voice. I, I took it out from my mom. Well. I sound like my mom. Is that the correct way to put it? Because <laughs> my mom, my, myself, my mom, and my sister sound the same. Okay. We all have that huge, husky, mm. deep voice. Okay. Yeah. And um, you said you're the first born. Yes. Um, how many girls are you? What, Two was girls. Was there any discrimination? Maybe um, did no. their boys go to school? Oh, no, there how wasn't. Was it like? Oh, my. We had five of us, two girls and three boys. Okay. I come from a liberal home and I also come from a loving home where our parents loved all of us equally and if we lacked, then we all lacked. Mm. There was nothing like let the girls get before the boys or and let the boys... some um, parents used to do it. Some actually still do it. They still do it, in yeah. areas. I know that, what yeah. What can you tell them? No, in our, no, honestly, for me, discriminating against children mm. based on gender mm. is so wrong. Yeah. It is so wrong, yeah. I, I haven't seen it, mm. like with my own eyes, I've not seen it happen, mm. but I hear stories, yeah. especially from the older days. I don't know how many people are still doing it now, mm. but... Actually, the numbers have gone down because people are sure. now sensitized yeah. and thinking. So, yeah. That's the thing. That, that is Social how it is should better. be. Yes. Um, are you joined media? Which yeah. year was that? That was in uh, 2000 and... Uh, towards the end of 2003. Yeah. It's in 2004 because... I think I first started working in December 2003. Okay. Yes. Now, since that time yeah. till today, how can you um, rate the state of women uh, working in media today? I would say we have made huge steps, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. I would say we've made huge, huge steps. I remember when I had just joined media, I was comfortable anchoring news. And that was it. But then, uh, after anchoring news so many, uh, for so many years, I decided to leave it, walked into a radio station, that's Capital FM, and I said, you know, I've been anchoring news at this Christian radio station, but now I would like to give, you a, sh give a shot at presenting. Uh, they didn't ask whether I had a program idea, no, yes. Uh, there are certain places that have already established programs, yes. and incidentally at that time, they were actually looking for a presenter. So I went in and I was given an opportunity. I started by doing the weekend show and later on was promoted to the breakfast show. If you ask me, you know, if, if, if women had not 
had an impact in the media, then maybe I would never have been accepted into the presenting um, arena. This guy would have just said, ah, you're a lady, you stay in there. And probably even I personally would not have seen it in me, you know, the ability to do this. Yeah. Gone are those days when women would sit back and say, this, it's only the guys that can do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a political talk show, let the guys do yeah. it. Oh, I it's, handle that. exactly. Oh, I can't handle that. Oh, I can't handle that camera. <laughs> you understand? We are, we all doing this, mm -hmm. you know? There's another guy, and another lady who will be doing a health program. So, surely times have changed. Yeah, we're not where we were then. No, 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 no. And you can tell that ladies are pushing themselves. Yes. They're getting out of the comfort zones to do way above other what people expected of yes. them. Yeah. What has been your personal experience working in it's, radio? Yeah. It's been great. It's been great. I am, I enjoyed the transition from doing news to, you know, just doing news review, rather, editing the stories, going on air, and I have two or three minutes on air and coming back. I have had amazing an amazing time hosting the breakfast show on capital with men yeah. yes oh, is it oh, like it's good <laughs> stubborn guys <laughs> they are very stubborn yeah and you know i've had it i've done with very many of them okay. several have come and yeah. gone they've left me on the show for long but it's always been a pleasant experience and especially when the people that you do the show with um treat you as an equal yeah. I've not had an incident where my co-host said, Jackie, shut up because you're a woman. No, they didn't. I, they, you know, we sit down, we're doing show prep. My opinions will be considered. If I, we're coming up with ideas, I will bring mine, they'll bring theirs. And I've not been sidelined. I have not. As a result of that, it's been enjoyable all through. I keep saying in my world, when you ask me, so how does it feel to work with men? Or um, how is it for a woman in the media? I don't know. I've never had an answer to that question because I have had a smooth experience all my years and I've never had this outright treatment of, you know, you're feminine and so yes, this is yes. what, yeah, this I'm is what we'll give you. There's yeah. not been that at all. And I, I also think it happens because you, I, I show them. I think even I have, the way you carry yourself. That's the thing. I wanted yes. to say that. It depends on how you carry yourself. I have not gone into this job to look for sympathy. I went asking for a job. I was given the job. My role is to perform. Speaking of work, yeah. today we have uh, many people, women facing challenges, mm. um, career women especially. Yeah. They are failing to balance work mm. and family. Yeah. They are thinking of work, work, work. Mm. What advice would you have for them? Find a balance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. yes, find a balance. Because none of us, mm. there could be someone out there, but very few of us have just one job to do yeah. or just one role. You will walk into an office and the receptionist has to attend to the phone, but she also has to direct people, mm. she also has to welcome them. Those are different roles. If you're going to concentrate on answering the phone, who's going to direct the guests? So one area will suffer. All of us have those different busy areas of our lives. It's important to strike a balance. Work is important. Family is important. Of the two, there could be one that is more important than the other. You know? So is it family that is more important? But also, family, maybe I'm the sole breadwinner. I need to work to make sure that the family survives. So, it's up to you to work out your time. What do you think of um, women today mm. in Uganda, mm. in Africa? Have we been empowered? Or some, do we understand what empowerment I what? think, mm. have we been empowered? Yes. <laughs> we have. Mm. I think the environment, the society has empowered us. Mm. But we've also empowered ourselves. Mm. Our thinking has changed. We're seeing women mm -hmm. go out there to earn a living more and more. We're seeing women that are more passionate about sharing the bills yes. at home. Yes. We're seeing women that are more outgoing and willing to just support their partner. This, to me, is the correct form of empowerment. Mm. We could have all these activists probably claiming we need more. It's possible. Yeah, there's always room for improvement. But sure enough, we Maybe have Maybe some are not understanding it. Yeah. They are misunderstanding the word empowerment. 
probably you think you think the people who think empowerment means that a woman can make another woman pregnant? That is it's not it's not empowerment. They should when, know there is a limit actually. At, at the end of the day, mm. there's a limit. Yeah. We, we can just say for me, a woman's role is complementary. Mm. That is how it should be. That the man should always be there doing more than what the woman does. It's a pity that as women strive hard to do more, the men are falling back. I see that more and more. Into radio or watching TV, and there's a lady who is interested in a man who's financially stable. Now we have a guy who's interested in a chick or woman who's financially stable for marriage. Who's going to marry the other? You know. You know? <laughs> Parliament is complementing each other, not as overtaking them. You know, there could be those that have misunderstood it. And they feel like they are men. Mm-hmm. It's okay <laughs> if it's working for them. <laughs> I keep saying, if it rocks your boat, mm-hmm. why not? Especially the young ladies, yeah. they face challenges in media. You know, they have just joined, and people want to take advantage of them. Yeah. You know, so that they can also go, go, go in the line, line, line. Yes. Um. What? How do you think they should um, go through this, overcome these challenges? And you know, and you know, that particular challenge is not just in media. It's All everywhere. Over. Yeah. I but you know, to, for media, it's worse because you export. Imagine, yeah. So I talked to very many people. I interact with many young women, and it's one thing that they have voiced. I know the challenges are there. I can assure you about one thing, though. If that job is meant for you, you'll always get it. You don't have to to submit. Exactly. You don't have to, you don't have to submit. You will get that job. And the other thing is, if you're good at it, you know that the only way I'm going to get this job is on merit. So you're going out dressed for that position, spoken. You know, you from from the way you look to the way you speak to the way you walk. Somebody looks at you as you walk in, they tell this one is out this job and the only way I'm going to get it is by playing, by their you know, their game. It will be, they will set the rules and you'll follow the rules. They will request and you're going to, you go to offer what they ask for. If you're going to look at it that way, then that's what you will do. But if you're going to walk into this place and ask to be given that job because you qualify, you will get the job. In most cases, it depends on how you carry yourself around. Because these men are everywhere. We will meet them everywhere. And they get attracted. They have eyes. They get attracted. So imagine you walk into this place and your cleavage is here. <laughs> Your privilege is here. What do you expect him to do? Thank you. What do you expect him to do? You've been called for an interview and you're wearing a very short skirt. Then you sit there, push the chair far away from his table and cross your legs. Oh, boy. <laughs> Trust you're me. You're calling them. Uh-huh. You're calling them. And if things go south, you'll have to blame yourself. Don't even blame them. Yeah. Blame yourself. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we know it's happening, so how do we deal with it? Yeah. Do not leave room for rich to thrive. We, we encourage it by dressing that way and you're walking in and maybe, you know, you, as I've said, you, it's already preconceived. Yeah. The only way I'll get this job is by doing this. Yeah. That is how it will go. But if you're going to say, I have my PhD, yes. I have a master's you degree. You know what you want. You know what you want. You will get it. Oh, wow. you will get it, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Um, Jackie, what, what is it that people may not be knowing about you? Oh, oh. Mm. Let me see. You think they know everything? I'm thinking, I have a feeling they know everything, oh? but probably. <laughs> Maybe the one thing no. they don't know is that I owned and worked in a salon. Are those two different things? Yeah. Like you see these fingers, I can plate hair, I can palm hair, I can do I because yes, when when I didn't have school fees to join campus, my dad opened for me a salon. So I did all yeah. those things. Yeah. So you know everything to do with the salon. I know everything to do with the salon. The other thing that I did, which I just haven't done for a while, is baking. I baked cake. <laughs> and not just baking cake. Okay. I did wedding cake. Oh. Commercial. <laughs> commercial. Okay. But commercial in the village, very many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so it's been a while. It's been a while and I will yeah. not lie to you, it was not anything like what we see now. Mm. But 
the fact manual, that manual thing. you know it was very <laughs> manual my god exactly the icing too uh, was a plastic thing uh, first you mix the icing sugar yourself then you've got to put it in that plastic thing and the decorations it was a lot of work <laughs> things that maybe very few people would know i did mm. and what are some of those things you can maybe tell us that have shaped you to be what you are so far oh I think you maybe are. first and foremost it would be family. My family has been very inspirational and supportive. I would say it. I'm surrounded by the most amazing men, starting with my dad and my three brothers. Then I have this wonderful sister who will go to any lens to be there for her family and to also support all of us. I come from that kind of home where if you say it's media that I want, they will do anything possible to support you, yes. They'll get you the job, rather the money, they will support you. If it's a contact you need, they will help you. I think it's mainly been that, the fact that I also, I don't want to let them down. That in everything I do, I have this family that has supported me all the way and I want to be the best version of myself for their sake. And speaking of family, do you have a family of your own, like you, you uh, as Jackie? Do you have as a husband, children? children. Exactly. Oh no, I don't. No, <laughs> okay. not yet. Still yes. waiting. Still waiting. Uh, do you have a slogan that drives you in life? Mm. I think for me, life is more enjoyable, easy when you're yourself. Because every one of us can be the best version of us, as long as we help us to be that. Exactly. Identify the strengths, work on them, be the best version of yourself. Don't try to be someone else. When it comes to prayer, are you a prayerful person? Oh, oh. Or you actually do not church? church? I know church. <laughs> hey! Uh <-huh. laughs> I know church. I am a godly person. Okay. I am very prayerful. Really? Yes. I'm not okay. saying I'm perfect. But I also know that the living God loves me just as I am. Exactly. So I worship a lot. I serve in my church as an usher. Okay. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean wow. I, party, I don't party or do yeah, something. No, uh -huh. no, I still do it. Well, at least you remember. <laughs> exactly. I, yes, I live life I, to the fullest. But I acknowledge that the fact that there's a God. Mm. I am everything that I am, what I am, purely by God's grace. Do you have a favorite dish? Uh, Please say it in some Luganda that you say you know. Oh, <laughs> you can sample us. Mm -hmm. Proof. Favorite dish. Njagana nyobi nyewa. Vinyewa. Nsogola kulia vinyewa. Mubi janjalo. Kaunga. Muchere. Kasta wali mubi vinyewa. You understand? Mochere. I love you. This is saga. Then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Vegetarians are going to hate you. <laughs> oh goodness! Oops. <laughs> I should have been sensitive. Eh? <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. we, it's we, we don't have that many know? around uh -huh. us. Yeah. And again, it's what I love. You're, yes. you're asking me about myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I see you know the Luganda. <laughs> You've seen. Yes. yes, I told you. Try wow. me. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. And um, finally, as we conclude the program. Um, give a word of advice to the women mm. watching, those who would love to join media yeah. and perhaps are scared or they are not confident. Yeah. yeah. Just give them a word Don't of advice. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You want to join the media, but there is enough space for all of us. <laughs> you have that passion, go for it. Be confident. Never look at yourself as incapable. I watched a video recently and there's this girl who does not have limbs but she's an acrobat and I remember the thing she said the two words that her foster parents told her were I can't never say I can't but in this world we are all capable of doing everything like we can conquer the world there's no limit to how much we can do we as human beings might set the limits but God never put those. So if it's the media that you want, just go out, be, be confident that you can do it. Because again, when you're, when you're confident in yourself, then other people will have confidence in you. The other thing is, 
the world owes you nothing. The world owes me nothing. Everything that I want, I've got to work for. That's the other thing that we need to do and need to know. It's not that nobody will give you anything. <laughs> You've got to work for whatever you want. And working is relative. People work in all sorts of ways, but you've got to work. And thirdly, that should be the third and last point. Be yourself. Be natural. Yes. Uh, have you tried some comedy before? You should have joined comedy You're as kidding well. me. Seriously. No. Yes. How come you've not been laughing? <laughs> oh my God. You. Thank you for making time. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You're I welcome. enjoyed spending time with you. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure you've been inspired and you've been encouraged. And those who didn't have the confidence, you've gained the confidence now. You know how to go about everything in life. This has been The Shift. I've been your host, Kara Ashawa. Keep tuned to UBC. The big secret in life is that there is no big secret. Whatever your goal, you can get there if you're willing to work.